In this video, we will be tasting and talking about the new arrival of our eco-farmed high mountain oolong tea. Here we are with uh, our latest batch of eco-farmed high mountain oolong tea, which was harvested on July 12, 2021. We had the pleasure and honor of uh, attending the processing of the tea. We arrived late in the afternoon uh, as the tea was being brought. Well, actually, it had all been brought in from solar withering and was well into its indoor withering process by the time we arrived. Uh, at about 5 p.m. and we didn't finish until about 5 a.m. Uh, despite the fact that it was uh, quite a small batch relative to what is normally harvested uh, by conventional farmers. This is an organic tea farm, certified organic, and is naturally farmed. It's not only certified organic. I should say that there's a, a, a fairly broad spectrum of farming methods within uh, what can be certified organic. And this farm is one of the most naturally farmed uh, tea farms that we have seen and uh, have gotten familiar with. One plot of tea does get irrigated. This plot of tea has not been irrigated uh, for over a year. So um, they didn't harvest last winter. And this was the first harvest of this year because there was a drought since last summer, really. And given that there's no irrigation, these plants just, uh, they barely produced last fall and just barely produced in the spring and didn't really start sprouting until the plum rains hit in June. So there was a nice growing season for at least six weeks before uh, this tea was harvested. So uh, I put uh, about 11.8 grams of tea leaves in this uh, 175, 180 milliliter teapot, brewed it Gung Fu style about one minute each time. I have the first brew in this cup here, second, third, fourth, and this fifth brew uh, sat while we were setting up uh, to shoot this video. So for probably 10 minutes, a good 10 minutes, if not more. So we'll just see what that has to offer. I'm sure it's going to be power packed. Um, so We've been encouraging this farmer to employ more traditional uh, processing methods uh, when he processes his tea leaves. Namely, that means a higher level of oxidation. And what is involved in allowing the leaves to oxidize more is more withering and shuffling, particularly shuffling in the case of these leaves because they grow very slowly and uh, they tend to basically start to toughen. They're not as tender as conventionally grown leaves that are um, helped with fertilizers on a seasonal basis and they grow steadily and um, uniformly and are picked when they're nice and tender and they're very well much easier to process than a, a stock of raw leaf like these are. Uh, they're not overly mature. The leaves are slightly yellow but not really when they're really mature leaves, you can really see this um, yellowing tint in the dried leaves. There is some there, but uh, that is totally common for this type of um, farm. So uh, beyond the uh, growing and processing, which like we said, we, we've been encouraging this uh, couple to oxidize their leaves more, they did push it a bit further. We feel that there's a certain flavor profile that their produce can produce. It's a savory kind of uh, pastry, um, fresh scone kind of uh, flavor profile that we've come to appreciate. And that also involves uh, post-processing uh, roasting, post-production roasting, I should say. And we brought it to our friend who we source our traditional Dongding Oolong tea from, as well as our uh, small leaf black tea from. He's one of, uh, he's a good friend of ours who he not only processes his family farm uh, of tea, but he uh, offers his services to local farmers. He processes raw leaf for many farmers in his community. And he's uh, willing to help us to try to bring this tea to its maximum potential by roasting it with finesse. 
He says that these leaves, given that they're on the tree for much longer than a conventionally uh, grown crop of tea, the fiber content in them is much more. They basically get more mature. And um, they cannot handle high temperatures. They wouldn't really, well, it wouldn't benefit them anyway. So he roasted it at uh, between 80 and 90 degrees for three sessions of eight hours each. And then the last day uh, was just coming out of a typhoon that didn't really hit our area at all, but it did bring humid weather. And he decided to go for a fourth roasting just for a few hours um, to, to bring the drying, mostly to remove every bit of moisture out of the leaves and to just lightly, lightly toast them. It did bring out that fresh scone, slightly savory uh, factor in the flavor profile, along with a distinct honey fragrance, as they call it in Chinese, which is the result of being affected by insects, most prominently the green leaf hopper. So it does have the mi xiang, which is classic for uh, uh, tea leaves that have not been sprayed, and these bugs come and uh, bite the leaves, and that's an immune system response in the plant which uh, actually the reason that it produces this kind of uh, aromatic uh, quality, the plant produces that to attract another bug, a spider, I believe, to come and eat those green leaf hoppers. Nature's ingenuity. Okay, let's get to tasting. So this is the first brew. It's cooled down uh, to almost room temperature now. Yeah, it's sweet. Uh, that honeyness comes out. It's definitely got a vegetal, but very mild vegetal note to it. Herbal, savory herb, very balanced. The roasting really did do it well. We're very, very grateful uh, to our friend for offering that. Let's go to brew two. The visuals, um, I have two, three, and four out here are pretty close. It looks like the third brew is a little bit darker. I didn't time them, so I could have uh, left that go a little longer. It's an amazing, the, the honey factor is quite prominent uh, now that I'm uh, allowing it. I, this is probably the first time that I'm uh, brewing it separate uh, brews and having let them cool. That's a very specific factor in really getting the full flavor profile, the whole spectrum of the flavor profile. You get a lot more of a comprehensive sense of the um, constitution of a tea when it has cooled down. That's why they do it in the tea judging competitions as well. Okay, might as well keep cruising here. Holding the tea in my mouth and exhaling, there's almost like some honey does has this too. It's almost a musk factor in there. Very heady, floral, dried flowers, that kind of headiness. It's very substantial. That's the, consistently this tea. It has more stuff in the leaves, if I may be very basic in my uh, description. The constitution, the chemical compounds, uh, that's what organic tea offers, especially when it's naturally farmed. Um, it's not full of fertilizers and uh, not really, I wouldn't say artificially, but kind of, um, yeah, it's not fed superfoods to produce this flavor that doesn't come directly from the soil. So coming from the soil, not being irrigated, growing in its own cycle, um, it has that in its character for sure. Pretty consistent throughout the second, third, and fourth. I'm gonna go back to the third for a sec. <clears throat> Honey scones with nutmeg, something like that, a warming spice, a little bit of a herbal character to it, not as intense as thyme or uh, maybe something like sage, a little bit mellower and that kind of musky, I won't go as far as smoky, it's not really smoky at all. It's just got this um, thick quality to its flavor profile that's hard to pull apart in terms of specific notes. 
Yeah, the first brew definitely brewed lighter. That's very um, characteristic of this tea as well. It doesn't really start brewing out until the second and third brews. So you can get the lighter kind of uh, more delicate notes in the first brew, but it's thinner and it's not as uh, rich and um, composite, so to speak, as the later brews. Almost floral when it's brewed lightly. There is a, a dried floral character there. Okay, here's the power brew. <laughs> it's probably going to take my face off. It's very strong. It's not intense. It's, it's definitely, my tongue is dried, uh, but it's not like super, uh, too uh, unbearably astringent at all. It is like a concentrate. I can't really taste any specific notes. It's just like, the, the, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's a lot of flavor, compact, concentrated. That's, that's just blowing past my taste buds and right up into my sinuses. Yeah. At that level, you kind of immediately start perspiring. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Uh, uh, it's really this year's growing seasons have been delayed, especially when organic farms were not irrigated. The drought, which ended in May, and we finally got rains all through June. Uh, this is the first real crop since there has been water to produce new growth. Uh, the, the environment is amazing. I didn't get to mention that. It's in the Ishan High Mountain Oolong Tea Growing Region. This is at 1,400 meters, right near the, uh, the original trailhead to the highest peak on the island, uh, Jade Mountain or Yushan. It's actually the highest peak in all of East Asia. So it's got this very rugged, deep, uh, mountainous uh, climate there and feeling. And we feel like the character of this tea represents that. You can read about all the details uh, of this tea on our product page and it is for sale now. And this will be uh, the, the crop that we have in stock at least until the end of the year uh, if they're lucky enough to have a good winter crop that we can get a share of. It's one of our favorite. Um, it's definitely, uh, well, we're making a documentary about this farm and the people that run it. Uh, so you can uh, be able to get that full story, hopefully in the near future. Thanks for being with us and uh, send us any questions or comments about this tea in the comment section of this video or on the blog post or on the product review page. Thanks.